Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Devotional. This week, I'll be uh, looking at Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 through 8. And this is a great passage to look at and examine and understand the heart of a pastor. And who else to examine to see and understand the heart of a pastor but look at the heart of the Apostle Paul, who exemplified the perfect pastor. Now, nothing can compare to the Good Shepherd, who was the perfect, perfect pastor, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He said, I'm the Good Shepherd. But after the Lord Jesus Christ, if there is any example in scriptures, it would be that of the Apostle Paul. And this week, we will zoom in on the work of the Apostle Paul amongst the Philippians. The Apostle labored among many of the church at Philippi and is now in prison. And he writes this letter to the church he dearly loved, that is the Philippian church. Paul had such fond memories of the church. Why? Because the church had brought him much joy. And today, let us look at the heart of a pastor uh, with the fact that a pastor is thankful in verse 3. A thankful attitude. Philippians chapter 1, verse 3. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you. Paul says, I thank my God. The verb thank is in the present tense. Meaning, Paul is habitually and continually thankful for them. Paul is saying, no matter where I am, I cannot get you off my mind. You are continually in my thoughts. You are constantly on my mind. Next, Paul says, in all my remembrance of you. How long has it been since Paul had been in Philippi? Paul had first visited Philippi in 49 AD when he planted the church at Philippi. Now it's over 10 years. It is 61 AD and Paul is imprisoned in Rome. What had happened over these years? Well, over these years, Paul has visited many other places and has planted other churches. We can read about it in Acts chapter 17 through chapter 20. After Philippi, Paul went on to Thessalonica. Then he went on to Berea, then Athens, and then Corinth. And he was in Corinth for 18 months. Then he went on to Ephesus. He was there for three years. And from Ephesus, Paul went on to other cities. And then finally reached Rome. Despite these extensive travels, 10 years later, Paul had not forgotten the Philippian church. Philippi was not a place of fond memories. I mean, he loved the memories of the Philippian church, but it was not a place of fond memories. Why? Read about that in Acts chapter 16. Paul was stripped of his clothes. He was illegally arrested. He was beaten. He was humiliated before the people. And he was placed in the stocks. Paul had written to the Thessalonians about this incident. And we can read about that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully treated at Philippi, as you know, we had boldness in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in the midst of much conflict. But yet, in spite of these difficult circumstances, the Apostle Paul had fond memories of the Philippians. Now let's see, if to whom does Paul give thanks? Because he says in verse 3, I thank my God. So Paul is grateful to God. He is thankful to God. He is thankful for the Philippian church. He is thankful for the good work that he started in them, for the zeal and, and the fervor the Philippian church had for the gospel and how they became partakers of the gospel. Paul was thankful for this. And as thankful as he was, he demonstrated that by giving thanks to God. Read the story of the ten lepers in Luke chapter 17. All of them cried out, Jesus, Master, 
have mercy on us. But after they received the benefits, that is, when they were healed, only one returned to give thanks. Hearing the story, we may be quick to judge those nine men as being so ungrateful that they forgot to give thanks to God. But aren't we guilty of the same? We too have been healed of a, a condition worse than leprosy. We were all spiritually dead and we were enslaved to Satan, to sin and death, and we were by objects of God's wrath. But God, who is rich in mercy, reached out to us and took away the heart of stone and gave us a heart of flesh, took away the dead spirit and, and put a new and living spirit within us. He took our sin upon himself and imputed us with his righteousness. He transferred us from the kingdom of darkness and, and placed us into the kingdom of his son. But, beloved, are we thankful to God for this work of salvation? How often do we pause during the day to thank God for His grace and mercy? We enjoy His love. We enjoy His protection. We enjoy His provisions. We enjoy His providential care. But do we stop to thank God for it and praise Him? Or are we so preoccupied and discontent with everything that goes wrong in our lives. Things that are not happening as per our expectations. And so all we do, and let me say all I do, is complain and grumble. This is what the nation of Israel did in the wilderness. They grumbled and they complained. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20, Paul writes, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father. Two words I want you to notice there. Give thanks always and for everything. Always means always. Everything means everything. In our lives, we are to give thanks to God. Always, meaning continually, and we are to give thanks in everything not just when we are doing fine. Even when we are not doing fine, we ought to give thanks. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18 reads, Giving thanks in all circumstances. Why? This is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Beloved, Paul, in spite of his dire circumstances, he was so God conscious that he took time to thank God for the Philippians. It's a message I need most. I'm so thankful. Though not always, sometimes I complain and grumble with everything that's going on. And I need to remind myself to emulate the Apostle Paul more than anything else in my life that whatever the circumstances in my life, I got to give thanks to the Lord. For what? Well, for my salvation. For your salvation. For bringing you into my life. And the ability and the privilege I have to serve you as your shepherd. Have a wonderful day. Blessings.